ますそれ。こっち、こっち、はい。え、どっち。あ、大丈夫、じゃあ、ここ、ここでいいです。はい、皆さん、おはようございます。聞こえますでしょうか。聞こえたら、手を、えー、っとね、手を挙げてください。大丈夫そうですね。はい、じゃあ始めます。えっ、ー、と、おはようございます。えっ、ー、と、今日はパイコン JP2022 にお越しくださりありがとうございます。えっ、ー、と、私は、えっ、ーえー、と、2022座長の片寄セリーナ、えっ、ー、と、えー、と愛称でセリーナと呼ばれております。よろしくお願いします。Uh, good morning, everyone.、Uh, welcome to p y c o n JP2022. Um, I will be your English translator for this morning's opening.、Uh, my name is Jonas, and I hope you're having a great day. ありがとうございます。えっ、ー、とこんな感じでえっ、ー、と日本語と英語を混じりながらオープニングを始めていきたいと思います。それでは、えー、パイコン JP2022 始まります。オープニング始まります。<笑>はい、お願いします。はい、えっ、ー、と。えーまず、えーとえー、今回のカンファレンスについて全体の流れを説明いたします。えー、今,今日は 10, 10月14日金曜日で、デイワンということで、カンファレンス1日目があります。でその後、明日ですね、明日はデイツーとして、えーと、カンファレンスの後半を行います。でえー、とデ,イデイスリーといいますか、スプリントデイを設けておりまして、えー、16日の、えー、日曜日にスプリントデイとして、この会場を20回。ですね、今ここは4階なんですけども20階で、えー、と開催を予定しております。詳細はまた後ほどご案内します。はい。And so yeah, to, in today's opening we will explain the schedule and the events of the、uh, conference. And today is day one, Friday. Tomorrow is day two, again conference day. And then on Sunday we will have a sprint day、uh, in the same venue but on the 20th floor instead of here on the fourth floor. And apparently, we're having some technical troubles, so please stand by. えー、ちょっとここでご案内いたします。えー、スポンサーの方で、えー、とレシーバーを、スピーカーも含めて、えー、とレシーバーが、えー、と皆さん必要ですので、ぜひあのまだ持ってない方は受付の方で受け取ってください。お願いします。Um, if you're a speaker or a sponsor and you haven't received your、uh, receiver yet, please go get it at the、uh, reception. はい、じゃあ次に行きます。えっ、ー、と今回のえっ、ー、と出てますようにえっ、ー、とパイコン JP2022 のまあ大きく掲げているテーマということじゃないんですけど、まあ。テーマとして気持ちとしてえっと表しているのがこちらに出てますように、ミートアンドディスカバー出会いと発見ということで、えっと今回は実行してきました。えっと皆さんご存知の通りコロナ禍ということで、2020と2021はまあオンラインだったりハイブリッドだったりとなかなか現地で会うことができなかったんですけど、今回はまたこうコロナ禍を超えて出会ってまたさらに発見をしてほしいなという思いで、えっと今回開催までこぎつけました。And this year's theme that we chose for this conference is Meet and Discover.、Um, for hopefully obvious reasons, for the past two years, we were not able to hold this event in person, but we're forced to hold it online or in a hybrid fashion. And so we're really excited to this year once again be able to hold it in person and on site. And we hope that this will be an event where you can、um, meet many people and、uh, make many new discoveries. はい、続いて、えーとえー、オンサイト、えー、と会場の案内に至ります。えーとえー、と表示はちょっと英語なんですけども、日本語を交えて、えーとえー、とご説明いたします。えーとまあ、3, 3年ぶりということで、まあ、私も座長経験とか。は実質その、えー、と初めてはあるではあるんですけどもちょっと至らない点があったらえっ、ー、とえっ、ー、とご了承あの申し訳ございませんえっ、ー、となんとかあの運営していきますのでよろしくお願いしますでえっ、ー、とあ英語でした<笑> and yeah、um, since the current、uh, since corona is still a thing、um, please do、uh, take a minute to read and understand our guidelines、uh, you can access them from The QR code here.、Uh, it's also linked on our website. And if you have any questions, please talk to us about it. Thank you. 
あすみません、ちょっと先ほど言うの忘れたんですけど、ガイドラインに関しての、えー、と日本語と英語の、えー、と資料とかをまとめたのがこちらにありますので、こちら、QR コードを読んでいただいて、こちら確認の上、えー、と今回のカンファレンスを楽しんでいただければなと思っております。えー、続きまして、えー、と今回、えー、とパイコン GP2022 で、えーとえー、公開にあたりまして、えー、ぜひシェアと,、えー、とコ,コミュニケーションということで、えー、と皆さん、参加者皆さんと交流してほしいなと思ってます。で、今回、運営側で、まあ、準備というか、えー準備してえーえー、準備しているものがありまして、まずは、まあ、ハッシュタグを準備するっていうのもおかしいですけど、まあ、ハ,ッシュタグハッシュタグがありますのでぜひツイ,ートツイッターやってる方はハッシュタグ、えー、パイコン JP をつけて、えーハッシュタえー、と発信していただきたいなと思いますで会場の写真も、えー、あの撮っていただいて構いませんので、えー、とぜひ撮っていただいてシェアをお願いしますあと,、えー、と後ほど案内しますけど、えー、とやっぱ写真撮られたくない方もいるのでその方の配慮だけはお願いしたいなと思っておりますあと,、えーと書いてありますようにパイスラックを使っておりまして参加者も参加できるスラックを使っておりまして、えー、と書いてありますように、えー、とパイコン JP フェローというものがありますでこちらの URL か QR コードを読んでいただくとそこに入る,入ることができますのでぜひこちらにお参加くださいあと、えー、その中でチャンネルがありましてシャープ、えー、と JP-2022 チャンネルで今回の、えーとトークとかその会話とか参加者の交流をやっておりますのでぜひそちら使って交流してくださいお願いします。And yeah, we hope that you will have a very fun and enjoyable conference and of course we want you to share your fun and enjoyment with the rest of the world so feel free to tweet about this or share it on any other social media that you may、uh, prefer. And if you do tweet about us,、uh, about, this, about this event,、uh, please use the hashtag、uh, PyConJP、uh, so other people can also find it.、Um, in general, it's also okay to take pictures and upload them to social media and share them with everyone.、Uh, but we will、uh, talk about this a little bit more later in the opening.、Uh, there are some ribbons that、uh, people can wear that don't want their picture taken. Also, we have an、uh, open Slack that anybody can join. Uh, to connect with、uh, other people, other attendees.、Uh, you can join it either through that QR code or through the URL you see on the slide.、Uh, inside that Slack, there's a lot of channels, but please use the JP 2022、uh, channel to talk about this conference or the top secret English channel on that Slack. 続いて、えーと、ツイッターハッシュタグの部屋別の案内ですね、えー、と一,般的、まあ、一般的に、えー、と使っていただきたいのは、一番上にある、えー、とパイコン JP の、えー、ハッシュタグを使っていただいて、イースト1、2、3、4、5、ウェスト3、4、5って分かれてますので、えー、とそれを、えー、とそ,それぞれです、ね、あのトークの内容に合わせてハッシュタグをつけていただくとより皆さんと交流できるかなと思ってます。で、場所の簡単な説明ですけど、まあ、こちら側がイーストですね。イーストで,でハワイへとか真ん中をえっ、ー、とえっ、ー、と返してあっち側がウエストという形になってます。で、案内等は後ろの方に書いてますので、えっ、ー、とそちら参考になってえっ、ー、とぜひハッシュタグ発信してください。And yeah, some more things about Twitter.、Um, if you share things in, on Twitter generally about the conference, please use, as we said before, the PyConJP hashtag. But we also would like you to use、uh, specific hashtags for each track if you want to tweet about a、uh, talk that is happening in a specific track. And there are written on the slide. And to explain what the East and West means, currently here we are in the East side of the building. And on the other side of the escalators is the west side, and it's east one, two, three, and then continues on the west. はいえー、続いて、えー、レシーバーチャンネルについてです。こちら書いてありますように、えー、と部屋ごとで、えー、とチャンネルが、えー、と異なっておりますので、こちら合わせて、えー、とご利用ください。And for the receivers to listen in to the talks, the channels are as you see on the slide. So during the morning keynote for English, please choose channel two. And then in the afternoon, use the channel that、uh, refers to the specific track that you would like to listen in.
スライえー、と今回の、えー、とス,ラスライドを使う案内でございます。えー、と今回、えーとあ、コロナ禍ということもあって、えー、とマイクを回して、えー、と質問を受け取るということじゃなく、えー、とこの現地会場としても、えー、とスライドを使って皆様に、えー、とスマホか PC で、えー、と質問などを受け付ける形で運営していきたいと思います。えー、その、えー、QR コードとか、えー、と URL は後ほど、えーと司会の方から開催の各スライドあの司会の方から案内いたしますので、ぜひ質問、ぜひいろいろと考えてスライドを使って参加し,しながら、ぜひトークのスピーカーに質問してください。そんな形で進めていきたいと思っております。And、uh, this year,、um, in, during the Q&A、uh, after the talks, we will not uh, let, uh, have you speak at the microphone. Um, just for safety reasons. And instead, we use an online call called Slido. And on there, you can ask questions or post comments.、Uh, you can see the link to the Slido on the monitors at the front of the room and also the code that you need to get in. And there's a separate track for each talk track. And please,、uh, if you do comment or ask questions, just keep in mind that these are public posts and that the speakers are human. So be, please be nice. あえー、とこの質問に関して追加で補足です、えーと。せっかくやはり現地で会場したということもあり、えー、と実際の、えー、とトーク会場ではスライドを使った質問を受け付ける形なんですけども、ぜひやっぱりこの現地であったので、トーク終わったスピーカーがいたときには、質問があるときには、ぜひ廊下等で、あと個別であのぜひあのお話ししたり、質問したりして構いませんので、ぜひそういう形でも質問してください。And of course, if you have more questions, that we, then we can answer during this、uh, QA time. Or if your question was not picked、uh, from the many questions on Slido,、uh, you can also, of course, talk to the speakers after their talk.、Uh, but we do request that instead of doing it at the front of the stage, please do it in the hallway or in the foyer. Okay,、uh, so let's try to use Slido, everyone. I want you all to take out your smartphones and, or laptops, it's fine, or、uh, tablets, and connect to Slido and write a nice comment. Tell us how did you get here?、Uh, what are you excited about? Something like that. ぜひスライドでポスあの投稿するときとかは、拍手するときにはあのパチパチができないので、ぜひこの8を使って、まあ、拍手するのを伝えるような感じで、ぜひあのあのスピーカーにこうこう拍手を送る感じでやってみてください。今やってみてくださいあ今あ、すみません。<笑>ぜひ今やってみてください。出てる。出てる。あ出てる<笑>えっと、出てるのが今、前のメモニターに出てるですね。すみません、私が見えなかった。<笑>大丈夫かな。Okay, it looks like it's working. And just、uh, my usual reminder every year、uh, to our international attendees on why Japanese people write 8888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888888
A uh, special thank you to the Python Software Foundation, who have uh, very generously supported this, who are very generously supporting this event. And thanks to their support, we could um, give more uh, support for uh, financial aid support for people uh, to attend. え、続きましてゴールドスポンサーの各社さんです。え、名前を読み上げていきます。え、日本マイクロソフト株式会社さん、ロイヤルエージェント株式会社さん、ラプラスさん、株式会社スクイーズさん、パイソンエンジニア育
あのこちら側ですねあの運営側に、えー、とお知らせくださいあとメールもあと使作っておりますのでこちらの coc.mark.pycon.jp もメール送ってこの気になった時には連絡ください。Um, to ensure that the、uh, PyCon JP is a safe and enjoyable conference for anybody who attends,、uh, we ask you to please read and respect our code of conduct, which you can find on the URL you can see in the slide at 2022.pycon.jp/coc. And in case、uh, that there should be anything that you would like to report, if you see something that ha is happening that is not okay, or if something has happened to you that is not okay, please do not just publicly share it on Twitter. But instead, report it to the staff,、um, either at reception or at the staff HQ over there, or email us at coc at pycon.jp. And that is important because if you just tweet about it, we might not see it and we cannot react to it. So thank you for、uh, your consideration. Hi, it's a good question. So, it's a good question. So, it's a good question. So, it's a good question. えー、と目,じ目印としてちょっと目立ちにくいかもしれないんですけど黒の T シャツこういう T シャツですね背中に、えっと、こ,うこういうあのスタッフの名前が入ってたりするのであとは、えー、とこ,このなんこ,こ,こ,こういうのじゃなくて紅、えー、色というかその、えー、とこういうポロシャツをこの色のポロシャツを着ている方もしくはスタッフの腕章をつけている方ここに。黄色のですね、こちらに書いてありますね、黄色の腕章でスタッフと書いてある方に、ぜひあのお尋ねください。Uh, if you have any troubles or any questions,、uh, please do not hesitate to ask any of our staff.、Uh, you can identify staff by the staff t shirts,、uh, where on the back it will say staff, or some of them also wear the Burgundy PyCon JP Association polo shirts, and some of our staff also wear、uh, yellow armbands、uh, with staff written on them. えー、と続いて、えー、と食事とか飲み物についてのご案内です。えー、と今回、えー、と現地で開催できてはいるんですけども、まだ引き続き感染症対策の、えー、を行った上で、えー、と開催しております。そのためご協力をお願いしたい点があります。えー、と今回、食事はランチ時間帯を除き、えー、とこの部屋ですね、えー、この中は禁止とさせていただきます。あと、蓋の閉まるペットボトル類はこちらで飲んでも構いません。えー、とあと飲んでるあのマスクを外しているときは極力あの喋らないようにして、えー、とぜひカンファレンスを楽しんでください。And yeah,、uh, some notices regarding eating and drinking at the venue.、Uh, in general, no food is allowed in the venue except during lunch,、uh, where we will provide lunch for you. And in the talk rooms, only bottled、uh, drinks or drinks which can be like firmly closed are allowed. No open containers, please.、Uh, you can use open containers in the hallways or in the foyer. And while on masks, please don't have conversations. And、uh, also, coffee and snacks are provided in the foyer. Hi, <laughs> 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 そうですね、ちょっと10時半からキーノートなのでちょっと押してますがちょっとこのまま進めます、えー、続きまして写真撮影に関してです、えー、と運営では写真ビデオを撮影して、えー、SNS などにアップします、えー、もし写真等に写りたくない方は、えー、と受付の方にノーフォトの、えー、とこちらにあ、えー、とネームタグの下につける、えー、リボンがありますのでそちらつけて、えー、と写りたくないアピールといいますかあのこうこう分かるようにしてもらえると助かりますなのであとは逆に写す方ですね写真撮影は OK なんですけどもしそういうリボンをつけている方がいたら極力写らないように撮影会場を撮影してください、um, We will throughout the conference be taking pictures and record videos also of the attendees and we will use some of that for publication for example on our social media and blogs If you do not wish to have your picture taken or a video of you recorded,、uh, there are no photos, please, stickers,、uh, ribbons at、uh, the reception. So please get one of those and put them on your badge. And you are generally allowed to take pictures and also share them on your、uh, social media, etc.,、uh, of the conference and attendees. But please do respect people who do not wish to have their picture taken or shared. Thank you. 
続いて w i f i についてご案内ですもご存あの。壁に貼ってあるところもあるんですけども、えー、こちらで会場で運営をで w i f i を用意しております。えー、と今シートを含めるえー、と防ぐためになるべくご自身のモバイルルーターとかは、えーとえー、とあのストップしていただいてぜひこっちの w i f i で、えー、統一して使インターネットを使っていただきたいなと思います。Uh, regarding Wi Fi,、uh, most of you will have probably already seen it、uh, posted around the、uh, venue in various places. But if you have not yet, and this is the、uh, access point and the password to get access to the internet. And a request from our hardworking networking team please do not use your own、uh, Wi Fi router in the venue, as it might interfere with our provided Wi Fi. Thank you. じゃあ続きまして、イベントの、えー、説明に入ります。えー、今日早速ですね、えー、今日ちょっと10時半ちょっと押してますけれども、キーノート、えー、とデイワンとしてマーク・シャノンさん、えー、と詳細この方の詳細は後ほど説明します、マーク・シャノンさんが、えー、おります。Uh, now,、uh, allow us to introduce the,、uh, today's event.、Uh, right after this opening,、uh, we will have the day one keynote by Mark Shannon, and we will explain more about this a little later. はいえーとでえー、全体のトークに関してなんですけども、今日は13時から5トラックで、えー、と開始していきます。で全体としては44ト,ラック、えー、44トークス、でデイ1が24、デイ2が20トークで、えー、進めていきます。And the talk sessions, which will start after the keynote and after lunch at 1,、uh, 1 p.m., are split across five tracks. In total, we have 44、uh, talks, and today there will be 24. はいえー、と今回です、ねえーと、スポンサーブースで、えー、ステッカー、えー、シール,シール、えー、ラリーですね、シールラリーをやっております。えー、とこの形で、えー、とスポンサーブースを回っていただくと,、えー、と、シールをいただけるので、それをいただいて、4枚集めると、この黄色の T シャツと交換できますので、ぜひスポンサーブース回って、この T シャツをゲットしてください。はいAnd this year we have a sticker collecting、uh, super fun event.、Uh, you gotta catch them all. Well, you only have to catch four of them actually. And you can get the stickers by talking to sponsors at their sponsor booth. And if you have four stickers collected, you can exchange them at a reception, I believe,、uh, for a nice yellow、uh, PyCon JP t shirt.、はい、続いて、えーとお楽しみのランチですね、えー、今回ランチを用意しておりますのでぜひ11時半から13時に、えー、とお弁当を用意していますのでこの場所は、えー、とエントランス近くに、えー、お弁当の、えー、準備していますのでぜひ参加者は皆さん、えー、とお渡ししますのでぜひあの受け取って、えー、食事、えー、楽しんでください。Distributed、uh, from 11 30 a.m.、Uh, near the entrances, and it's okay to eat them in here in the halls. And yeah, we hope you enjoy、uh, your lunch. ちょっと補足、ランチで補足なんですけども、先ほどここの会場で食事禁止であったんですけど、あの昼の時はこちら持ち込んで食べて大丈夫ですよね。ご安心ください。はい、続きましてコーヒーブレイクですね。はい、こちらも、えー、と今回準備していますので、ぜひ、えー、とこちらのありますように、えー、おせんべいとあめちゃん、あめですね、あめを用意していますので、ぜひあのこの時間、準備していますので、ぜひあのエントランス近くに準備していますので、ぜひあのおと取ってコーヒー楽しんでください。And we also prepare、uh, snacks and coffee,、uh, especially during the coffee break、uh, in the afternoon,、uh, including some fancy PyCon JP branded、uh, senbei. えー、続きまして、えー、たくさん今、まあ、書いてあるんですけど、これは、えー、と一般社団法人、えー、パイコン JP アソシエーションの案内、公開、えー、と案内です。えー、と12時から、えーとですね、公開運営会議を行いますので、えー、とぜひあの一般の方も参加できますので、えー、ぜひ興味ある方は、えー、参加いた,だいただきつつここでもスライドを、えーえー、公開して質問等を受け付ける予定ですのでぜひ12時から気になる方ぜひ参加ください。Uh, today, during lunchtime, there will also be a PyConJP Association meeting、uh, right here. 
and anybody is welcome to join it and we will also use slido for questions and comments unfortunately this event will be uh primarily or even exclusively in japanese so uh if you do not understand japanese i'm very sorry um but uh it is open to everyone and we would uh really like uh, for you all to join はい、え、続いてライトニングトークを募集します。え、ぜひ、えっと、え、トークはしないけど、LT したいという方はぜひ、えっと、参加していただきたいなと思っております。えっと、デイワン、今日ですね、は16、18時からクロージング前に行います。
Welcome to Hey You. はい、えーとあはい、では、キーノート始めさせていただきます、えー。皆様へのお知らせですが、トーク中はスライドに質問や感想をお書きください、えー。こちらのトークで使用するスライドの QR コードはモニターに表示されるております。あの LCD のモニターに表示されております。スライドに投稿された質問にはグッドボタンでの投票ができます。投票の多い質問から優先して取り上げますのでこちらの機能もご利用ください。Please write your questions to slide during the talk. The QR code for the slide used in the talk is displayed on the monitor. You can vote for questions posted on slide with the good button. The questions with the most vote will be taken up first, so please use the フィーチャーアズベルまた、えー、ツイッタータグでつぶやかれる場合は、ハッシュタグパイコン j p をお使いください。Uh, if you want to tweet about this talk, please use the ハッシュタグハッシュパイコン j p それでは、えー、と登壇される、えー、マークさんをご紹介いたします。I will introduce our speaker, Mr. Mark. Yes, マーク・シャノンさん、2005年から Python を使い始め、2010年から CPython にコントリビュートしています、えー。性的解析ツールの開発に長い間関わっていた後、ここ数年は Python の高速化に取り組んでおられます。えー、彼の学術的及び商業的な研究は Python のコンパイラー、仮想マシン、性的解析に重点を置いています。博士号を動的言語用の仮想マシンの構築に関するモデルで取られて41259062665などさまざまな PEP の著者でもございます現在マイクロソフトの資金提供によるファースター CPython チームの技術リーダーとして働かれておりますすみませんマイクのマイクのスイッチを切っちゃいましたスクロールお願いしていいですかそう、ああ、I will introduce our speaker Mr. Mark Shannon Mark has been using the Python since 2005 and has been contributing to C Python since 2010 after long Interlude、uh, working on static analysis tools.、Uh, he has returned to working on speeding up Python over the last couple of years.、Uh, his academic and commercial work is focused on compilers, virtual machines, and static analysis for Python.、Uh, his PhD was on building virtual machines for dynamic languages.、Uh, he is the author of various PEPs, including 412. 590626 and、uh, 659. Uh, Mark is currently working as a technical lead of the first C Python team founded by Microsoft. でそれでは、えー、発表していただきます。発表時間は50分です。Uh, the presentation, presentation time is 5 minute, 15 minutes. 発表前にマイクテストを兼ねて、えー、スピーカーにちょっとおしゃべりいただきます。So, then, uh, Mark さん、uh, please start your presentation.Hello?、Um, 
Uh, hello, PyCon Japan. I'm very sorry I couldn't be there in person. Uh, maybe next year. Um, I've just been introduced, so I won't repeat all that. Uh, one thing I will say, though, I've subtitled this talk An Opinionated History. And I want to make it clear that these opinions are mine and basically mine alone, and they don't reflect those of my colleague, necessarily reflect those of my employer or colleagues. So in the beginning, let's start this at the beginning. As you all know, I'm sure, at the beginning of the 1990s, Guido Van Rossum started work on a new scripting language named after Monty Python. Uh, you obviously know what that is, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Uh, version one was released in 1994. It was a much smaller and simpler language in those days, and there weren't many programs written in it, and certainly very few big programs. Uh, the 1990s was a decade of explosive growth in computer hardware performance. Speeds almost doubled every two years, or every year even. And performance didn't really matter too much because if a program was slow, you just waited a year and bought new hardware. By the end of the 90s, at the end of the 90s, year 2000, Python 2 was released. Computers had got a lot faster by then. Software was getting much larger, including Python's programs written in Python. But Python was still slow, and the speed was starting to be an issue for some, at least for people interested in performance. But Python wasn't really mainstream enough to attack much research interest then. Java, and to a lesser extent JavaScript, was where a lot of research in Python in programming language performance was going. But even in those days, some people were starting to think about how to speed up Python. But before we continue our story, let's have a bit of theoretical background. Uh, I'll try to keep this simple, but there is a bit to cover. Hopefully knowing a bit of the terminology and the background will help us make sense of, of where this is going and the rest of the story. So first of all, some terminology. A virtual machine is basically the program that runs your program. The virtual machine, so when you type Python at the command line, it starts the C Python virtual machine to run your script. You may often hear the terms runtime or interpreter describe Python, but for clarity, we'll use the term virtual machine. We use the term virtual machine as it is a machine, but it's a software machine. And it's the machine that runs our Python programs. And it itself is a program, so it runs on the real machine, the hardware. Region selection. So to optimize a program at runtime, you need to transform parts of it, whether it is Python or Java or Lisp. And we need to first determine which parts of the program to optimize. And we call this region selection. We can't optimize the whole program or the program would get slower, not faster. We would spend too much time optimizing the code and not enough time running it. Generally, you want to optimize the parts of the program that are executed the most, or what is commonly referred to as the hottest parts of the program. However, determining exactly which parts of the program to optimize while the program is running can be complicated, and different virtual machines do it in different ways. Baseline performance. This is the performance of unoptimized code. Um, in a very simple virtual machine, like early versions of Python, there was no difference between baseline performance and just performance. Everything ran at basically the same speed. But for an optimizing virtual machine, baseline performance is the performance you get for very short running scripts. Um, it's basically when there's no time to optimize anything. Baseline performance is where we start off with performance. And for larger programs, obviously, we aim to speed that up. But baseline performance is important because any part of the program that isn't optimized or can't be optimized runs at that baseline speed. And finally, optimizer performance. This is not how good the optimizer is in the sense of how good a job it does, but how quickly it does that job. So it's how fast the optimizer runs, not how good the code it produces is. I also wanted to go over some optimizations. So there are many optimizations that we can apply at runtime to a running program, um, potentially thousands of them. But we can group the most important ones for Python into three groups. This actually applies to any dynamic language, Ruby or Lisp, but we only really care about Python here. 
So the three optimizations that we care about, and it's worth remembering these three because this will inform the rest of the talk, are specialization, virtualization, and compilation. Specialization is the conversion of general operations into more specific ones that operate on specific types and values. Virtualization is conversion of an object into a more efficient temporary representation. For example, a tuple of two values can be represented as a pair of independent values, avoiding allocating the tuple. And compilation is the final step and inverts, involves, converting to byte, involves converting from bytecode or some similar internal representation into machine code so that we can run directly on the hardware. Compilation in virtual machines is often known as JIT compilation, J, which stands, JIT, which stands for just in time. Although it's a bit of a misleading name, concurrent compilation might be a better term. So specialization. Even a language as dynamic as Python, most, la most programs aren't that dynamic. If you run the same piece of code over and over again, you're likely to see the same set types and values over and over again as the program executes. And we can take advantage of that by customizing the program for the types of values that have been seen earlier. So specialization is the act of converting a generic operation such as add or attribute lookup into specific operations such as adding two integers or fetching an attribute at an off a fixed offset in an instance. And these specific operations are faster, sometimes many times faster. So in order to assure that programs can remain correct, however, we put what are called guards in place before the specialized instruction. For example, to be able to add two integers together, we must first check that both of those things values are in fact integers. In the example in the slide, which I've written in pseudo Python with go to's, a generic add is transformed into one specialized for integers. It is efficient if both A and B are integers because we have to do two checks and then a very fast machine addition. But even if they're not both the um, integers, it remains correct because we check their integers and if they're not, we just jump to some slower, more generic form. Obviously adding these guards may counteract our improvement in performance. So a removal of redundant guards, so guards where we have repeated guards that do the same thing is an important part of specialization. Virtualization, virtualization as I said, is not about not creating objects at all. So the expense of creating and destroying them can be avoided. Uh, for example, we can use the machine integer instead of a full Python integer, which is allocated on the heap. Or we might not create a tuple, simply moving the parts of the tuple from one place to another. A good example of this actually happens not dynamically, but statically in the Python bytecode compiler when we're compiling a multiple assignment. So the multiple assignment A comma B equals B comma A uh, is according to the semantics of the language creates a tuple from B comma A and then unpacks it into A and B. But in practice, rather than create the tuple and immediately unpack it, we simply swap the values over. Compilation is, is the last of the three. And that's just translating from bytecode or some similar internal representation into machine code. You'll often hear the term JIT compiler to use mean the entire optimizer. I will try to be stricter here and use specifically the term, use the term specifically to return, uh, sorry. I'll try and be stricter here and use the term specifically to refer to translation to machine code. But I may slip up and use JIT compiler just informally meaning an optimizer. Um, now, translation to machine code is uh, an interesting optimization because it is potentially very powerful and is what is often credited with making uh, virtual machines for other languages, particularly say V8 for JavaScript very fast. But by itself, it's actually fairly ineffective and it is only in combination with specialization and virtualization that it is that is effective. Uh, the table on this on the slide shows the numbers from my uh, PhD research. This is for a particular set of benchmarks for a particular experimental Python VM. These numbers would differ quite a lot for different versions of Py which, different Python virtual machines and different designs. But you'll see quite clearly that the difference of adding specialization and then particularly specialization and virtualization to compilation is huge. 
So that's all quite uh, technical. And I just want you to take away a couple of things from all that if you don't remember all the details. Specialization of the three optimizations is the key one. Not only does it improve performance, it also unlocks other optimizations. And compilation is potentially very powerful, but it's also expensive, both in runtime and engineering effort. So back to our story and the year 2003. The first thing we're gonna look at is a uh, extension for CPython called Psycho. This was implemented by Armin Rigo, who uh, is relatively well known in the Python community. Uh, he went on to uh, implement PyPy as well. Psycho was uh, quite ambitious and effective for a, a master's level research project. Um, and it was based around a specializing just-in-time compiler. So it implemented all three of specialization, virtualization, and compilation, but in a quite limited form. It was more focused on numerical code than, say, object-oriented style code. Uh, and, but its performance on numerical code was excellent. Uh, yeah, Object-oriented code, less so good. And if you started monkey patching things, it was likely to break. Um, but due to making a few incorrect sort of simplifying assumptions. As I said, it was a master's project initially. It only worked on 32-bit x86, but when it worked, it was fast. So after Psycho, uh, Armin moved on to PyPy amongst uh, with others. Uh, Pyco was built Psycho, sorry, PyPy was built as Psycho done right. Uh, so PyPy was developed to get the performance improvements of Psycho in a more robust and correct and maintainable way. And they succeeded. PyPy is currently the fastest Python implementation, although we hope that we will beat it with the C8 Python improvements in the next few years. Python is what is known as a tracing JIT. Now, tracing is a form of uh, region selection. And instead of choosing, say, functions or classes or any other syntactic elements to optimize, it waits until a hot point is found in code, a hot spot, and then it starts tracing the execution. What it does is as it executes, it records the execution until either the trace is too long or ideally it loops back to where it starts. Uh, the trace can then be optimized. Um, there are advantages of a trace because it's linear. It's, uh, their optimizations are can be are a lot simpler and faster. Uh, and if it optimizes loops, then there, there are looper optimizations that also become available. PyPy is very sophisticated, arguably too sophisticated. Uh, it's written in R Python, which is a restricted subset of Python. R Python has the same syntax as Python, but slightly different semantics. And in places in PyPy, uh, the two languages can even occur in the same file. As you can imagine, two languages with the different syntax, uh, the same syntax, but different semantics in the same file is as confusing as it sounds. Uh, if you're intrigued about PyPy and want to know more about its internals, I'd recommend watching Dave Beasley's PyCon 2012 keynote. Uh, it's in very informative and Dane, Dave is a very entertaining speaker. So HotPy. HotPy was my uh, PhD research project. It's not widely known and it wasn't terribly influential, but I'm including it because it does demonstrate demonstrated a couple of things. So the first thing it demonstrated was that specialization and virtualization are worthwhile optimizations, even without compilation. Meaning that if you do want a high performance uh, Python virtual machine, you can build it incrementally by implementing the specialization and then the virtualization in an interpreter, and then finally adding compilation at the end. Uh, and this is much what we are doing in the Faster C Python project. Uh, in Python 3.11, we've added specialization. We expect to add more specialization later and uh, of compilation eventually. And the second thing it showed is that some sort of code generation, like as used in PyPy, can be viable even with much simpler tooling. And we expect this to be useful again in the Faster C Python project. So Jython and Iron Python. Uh, Jython and Iron Python are not really uh, interesting from a performance point of view. They were developed to support Python on the uh, Java and C sharp systems and environments, 
But what does make them interesting from a performance point of view is that the platforms they run on have extremely good just-in-time compilers, but for static languages, statically typed languages, Java and C Sharp. And I'm bringing them up as a sort of a point of evidence that compiler by itself, regardless of how good, without the specialization and virtualization, does not gain performance. Because Iron Jython and Iron Python, Jython and Iron Python are a bit slower than C Python. So this provides more evidence that compilation by itself doesn't really help performance. So, whoops. Uh, so we've worked out how to build a fast Python. We do specialization, virtualization, compilation. PyPy does all of these things. It's easily installed and you can, you can use it now. You can download it uh, after this talk and play with it. So problem solved. We found the Holy Grail. Well, no. And the reason is the C API. Many, many important libraries in, that we use in Python are not written in Python. They're written in C or Fortran or more recently Rust and quite commonly C++. Uh, without number, or without NumPy, I should say, or, and number as well. Uh, more lately, TensorFlow and PyTorch. The Python ecosystem would be much smaller. And Python might be just another scripting language like Ruby or uh, Ruby or Lua. But there's a positive feedback loop here go, going on here because um, there are lots of powerful C libraries accessible from Python. People use Python more. And because people use Python more, if you have a library written in C or Fortran or whatever, you make sure you have Python bindings so people can use it. So it ends up that all libraries have Python bindings and people use Python for almost everything. And this is a problem for PyPy because it doesn't support the C API. Well, not as well as C Python anyway. And so for me, applications, C Python is faster than PyPy, even though PyPy can run the pure Python parts faster than C Python. When it has to interface the C code, it slows down enough and that can wipe out the advantages of the pure Python code performance. And that brings us to the next generation of uh, virtual machines starting in 2009. So, in 2009, Unladen Swallow project was started at Google, and they claimed that they would achieve five times the speed of CPython. It was a fork of CPython, and they hoped they would merge the work back into CPython. Uh, by building on CPython, Unladen Swallow gained good baseline performance and full C API compatibility, which are two weaknesses of PyPy. Unladen Swallow was a method of time compiler. Uh, now, method at a time just means it compiles a whole function at once or optimizes a whole function at once, unlike the tracing optimizer of PyPy. Um, it's not clear which is better. Evidence, largely PyPy speed, suggests that for Python tracing may be better, but it's not a clear cut thing. The problem with uh, Unladen Swallow's optimizations was not so much whether it's uh, with region selection, but it used LLVM as a back end. Now, LLVM produces excellent quality code, um, but it's very big and slow. It's designed for static languages. It's uh, widely used on Mac OS platform. It's the back end for Swift and Rust, among other languages. And it does produce excellent code, but it is bulky and slow. So this is a problem because it's very hard to optimize code if it takes an, a very long time to optimize it. So ultimately, Unladen Swallow's performance was disappointing and it was continued. So it brings on to Piston versus version one. So this was uh, another uh, virtual machine developed this time with Dropbox. Uh, it's supervisually very similar to Unladen Swallow. Uh, it's a method of time, just in time compiler. It uses LLVM as a back end. But unlike Unladen Swallow, it was an entirely new VM as well, um, which in hindsight, was not a good idea because it means that it does it lacks the C API support, and it too was it was discontinued after about three years of development. So by now it, it's becoming clear that if you want to make a faster version of Python, you probably best uh, building it on C Python in order to support the C API. Uh, so PEP five two three 
um, which was uh, came out around the same time as the Pigeon, which was developed to use it, uh, was basically a interface for plugging in a just-in-time compiler for C Python. The problem with this is that it's not necessarily well integrated with the rest of the virtual machine. And it also effectively forced um, any optimizer to be a method to time optimizer. And due to this constraint and the sort of narrowness of the interface, it, Pigeon has a very limited ability to specialize, which appears, impairs its optimizations. Uh, and consequently, Pigeon didn't really gain much performance. Uh, an interesting thing is a piston was based on a uh, pigeon. Sorry, uh, was implemented on top of Lu Ru Ryujit, which is the .NET runtime compiler, uh, which does seem to be considerably faster than LLVM. So that's a potential advantage of it. Uh, pigeon was abandoned this year uh, as porting to three eleven was deemed practical. So next is Sky Bison. So Sky Bison is from uh, was from Instagram, is now Meta, um, and Sky Bison is probably the most interesting of the latest generation of virtual machines. So Sky Bison is a bit different. So rather than implementing another just-in-time compiler, it focused on the design of the runtime. It included a specialized in interpreter, but no compiler. Uh, it can. It... Sky Bison has several important optimizations, uh, and adds. Okay, um, so while these improvements boosted performance, they were not compatible with the C API. Uh, we'll go through exactly the optimizations covered in SkyBison in a couple of slides. Uh, but because it wasn't compatible with the C API, it was abandoned in favor of Cinder, which is another uh, virtual machine to come out of uh, Instagram, now Meta. So developed at the same time as SkyBison, Cinder is another one that superficially swallowed uh, Superficially similar to Unladen Swallow. It's a method at a time compiler. Uh, it doesn't use LLVM. It is a part, mostly custom compiler using uh, what's called Asmjit as a back end. This is a, a co generation library, um, which means the compiler is at least fast. But what makes Cinder different is its compile then fork model. Um, in order to specialize, Rather than running the running, uh, rather than monitoring the running program, as do all the other virtual machines, it records profiles from earlier runs, saves them to disk, and then uses that information to compile uh, code when it starts up. Um, the advantage of this is that it can do lots of compilation ahead and then fork off many subprocesses. Uh, if you're running a large scale web sort of server farm, as Instagram obviously does, then this makes sense. Uh, if you have a model like that, then Cinder, it might be a, a worth looking at, but it's not generally that useful for anyone else. And last in this particular sequence of uh, virtual machines is S6. Uh, it's yet another method time, just in time compiler based on CPython. And, and by now you might be wondering what yet another one. Uh, and this was kind of my response when I heard about this. Uh, it's a bit more sophisticated in some ways. Uh, it has its own custom compiler and some runtime improvements, but it has been abandoned. So we've sort of discussed these compilers in terms of uh, their compilers and the optimization frameworks, but it's worth pausing to sort of uh, look at the other improvements to the runtime. So I've, I've grouped these into those four sort of important improvements in the runtime that aren't strictly related, aren't directly related to executing code. So the first one of these is tagged values. So in Python, everything is an object. Um, and that's the semantics of the language, but there's no requirement why at the machine level that everything should be allocated on the heap. Because allocating objects on the heap for simple things like integers and floating point numbers is quite expensive. So what tag values are is that if the value will fit into less than 64 bits and things like most int most integers, none, true, false, will be have much less information than that, we can then just pass them around on the stack or in registers and we get sort of C and Java-like performance for these sort of things. Uh, the problem with this is that the C API assumes that all Python objects are in fact heap to heap allocated objects. Uh, so 
tag values are incompatible with the C API, which is a which is a shame. Next thing is just a chunked frame stack. Uh, this is simply that we allocate a big block of memory for uh, execution. And when we make a call, the frame is just allocate is just uh, uses a chunk of that memory. And then when we uh, return, we just free that. We don't free the memory, sorry. We can just reuse it for the next call and so on. Uh, like a the stack as we get on uh, if you're programming in C. Um, normal Python allocates memories, uh, individual objects for each call, and that's expensive. So we can save thousands or many millions of allocations over the lifetime of a program by doing this. Hidden classes are a technique to reduce si the size of objects and to speed up attributes. I won't explain them here because they're quite complicated. Uh, JavaScript, the V8 engine for JavaScript is probably the most widely known implementation of them. And there's finally better memory management. Uh, Python uses reference counting, but it uses a very sort of simple, naive form of reference counting. And we can make that memory management more efficient in one of two ways, either by using a different type of garbage collector or by removing reference counting operations in the optimizer. Uh, as you can see on the slide, I've listed which VMs implement each of these, and you'll note the Sky Bison appears in all, for all four of these, which is why I think it was an interesting uh, experiment. Um, we've got two of these in Python 3.11, in C Python 3.11, and we're hoping to have better memory management in 3.12, but we will not have uh, the uh, tagged values in C Python anytime soon because of the C API issue. If you're interested in details of how the runtimes improved for C Python 11, my EuroPython 2022 talk has a much, much more detail on this, and it should be available online soon. I'm uh, not sure when the EuroPython publication schedule is, but I believe it should be within, it should be this month. So that was a long list of VMs, and there were a lot of failures in there. So why was that? Well, maybe it's just because there's too many sort of small projects and not enough coordination um maybe you just need more people and longer amount of time but i suspect there's an element of just not learning from previous failures there do seem to be a lot of sort of repeated similar efforts so by now it should be clear that an optimizer needs to be based on c python so it ports the ap c api it should be to install otherwise people just won't use it the other thing is that C Python is always just a safe option. No one's going to get fired for using C Python. So VM needs to provide a really compelling advantage in terms of performance or some other feature for people to switch. Um, there were a few other things. The optimizer needs to be fast so that real programs can be optimized. Now, what I'm saying by real programs is that if you have a very slow but uh, very effective optimizer, a lot of sort of benchmarks that things will run on a little short programs with lots of loops and those are very suited to being very well optimized but in quite slowly uh real programs tend to have a lot more code and a lot of it isn't run as often and isn't it? fewer loops and so a fast optimizer is key there although this particular lesson does seem to be learned by the later vms the later vms that i had on that list did have faster optimizers so a PyPy remains the fastest Python VM. So Python is a tracing JIT, which makes it surprising that all of the other VMs are method of time JITs. Um, I suspect this is because that the hotspot uh, JVM for Java and the V8 for JavaScript are both method of time JITs, and they both have very good performance. So I think there's a sort of association with method time uh, compilers with performance, but tracing JIT should not be disregarded. And I just don't, I don't think this is a, a solved problem either way. Okay, so let's look at uh, Python version two. So Python version, uh, Python version two, Piston version two, sorry, uh, is the latest VM to come out. And it, it does show the benefit of learning from previous efforts. So although it's a method of time compiler, which may or may not be the right thing to do, I suspect it isn't. It is, however, based on C Python, unlike the previous version. Not only that, its compiler is very fast, uh, which allows it, it's a lot more robust in terms of its performance. It can optimize short running programs and it, it works okay on large programs. So 
so we've run all through all these vms so it's let's have a little bit of fun and sort of give them all some scores to see how they're doing so we're going to allocate 10 stars for each vm so first of all speed well this talk is all about performance so we're giving three stars for performance I've also made big uh, big deal about supporting the C API, so two stars for that. And the remaining five stars are going to be: Can you use it right now? Like, can you just download it and run it, or pip install it? Uh, has it resulted in a feature being added to C Python? Even if you can't use it, has it contributed to the wider ecosystem? Did it have an improved runtime, or is it just like a plugin compiler? Uh, you know, an improved runtime is something that might inform future work on C Python, so that's beneficial. Does it do the optimization right? Does it specialize first, making all the other optimizers more profitable? And does it have a good baseline speed? As the last last one. So let's have a look at the first three that uh, before we talked about the C API. So I'm giving Psycho a score of six, even though those stars add up to five, and the reason for this is that. It started all off. Uh, it show it was the first thing to show that Python as a language could be fast, even if the standard implementation was generally slow. PyPy scores the best score of uh, the best score of seven. It, I, I'm only giving it two per performance, even though I said there were three stars available, and that's because although it is definitely the fastest, there's definitely room for performance improvements. Uh, JavaScript is not hugely different from python in terms of its sort of challenges in optimizing it yet the uh, javascript v8 engine is considerably faster than uh pypy well maybe that's unfair when pypy works well pypy can perform as well as uh, v8 but pypy has more weak spots uh, and its baseline interpreter is quite a lot slower than c pythons which does adversely affect its performance and loses it to star here uh, my hot pie thing, I'm giving it five stars, even though technically there's six there because um, it doesn't have complete library support. And it, it was just a research project, to be honest. So it's not really a, a real thing. Um, what it did, however, is uh, contribute uh, key, uh, the shared keys dictionary to C Python, which was introduced in 3.3. .3. Uh, right. So, what about the latest generation? Well, um, the scores vary and laden swallows first scoring five it's any of these based on c python effectively get three points two for the c api and one for a decent baseline performance uh so unladen swallow gets its other two points from adding a new feature to c python uh and what else oh yeah and actually having reasonable -ish speed the uh, new feature to C Python was a method cache, which is still in C Python and still helps performance. Um, and part of that was type versioning, which we also use heavily in 3.11. So the, the contributions to uh, of unladen swallowed C Python are, are significant, even though the project itself died. So it was definitely worth and worth the effort. Uh, Piston, however, just gets Amiga three points. Not being based on C Python means there's not really anything gained from the project, although. I think there was a lot learned from it, and some of the code has reappeared in Piston 2. So again, not a, not a waste of effort. Uh, Piston uh, Pigeon scores four because performance was pretty patchy, um, but it is still usable. Uh, you can go to trypigeon.com to download and try it out. Spy Sky Bison also gets a four. It's an interesting design, but that doesn't really compensate for its lack of C API support. Uh, Cinder gets five, arguably a six. I'm not giving it a point for being usable, even though it is actively developed and maintained, uh, because of its peculiar nature. It's the way it's designed for this sort of um, compile first and then fork. And that probably doesn't apply for most people's workload. Um, Piston 2 gets a six. It's a solid design. It builds on C Python, but it definitely improves performance. And the Piston Lite version, which doesn't get you as much performance gain as the full Piston version, but you can just pip install it in Python 3.8, 3.9, or 3.10. And that may well be the best option you have for speeding up Python code right now. And finally, S6 has some interesting technology, but it's not usable and it didn't contribute back to CPython. This just feels like a, another wasted effort. If, if the development effort that had gone into many of these projects had been put into CPython directly, 
think we'd be much further forwards. Um, now, it's not clear why S6 failed. In fact, I think, but I can make some guesses. And in fact, it doesn't just apply to S6. So it can apply to a number of these VMs. And I think it's just that maintaining a branch or a fork or a variant of CPython takes a lot of work. Uh, and uh, CPython itself advances and the language gets new features. And developers of these uh, alternative VMs end up spending so much time keeping up with CPython, keeping things in sync, that they end up never improving performance. And uh, effectively, their project just dies from lack of progress. So what is the way forwards? Are we just going to end literally pushing up, struggling to push this giant boulder up a hill? Uh, well, what have we learned? So before we go forwards, let's consider what we've learned. So I think clearly we need to extend CPython if we're going to improve, come up with a new virtual machine or a better virtual machine. And more than that, rather than just a fork or a branch or extension of CPython, we should improve CPython directly. Um, we should develop like actually on the main branch of CPython, uh, as we are doing. And that way everyone benefits from the improvements. And, and if for some reason we disband our team tomorrow, um, all of the Python improvements, performance improvements we put into Python 3.11 will stay there and they will continue to you will continue to benefit and other people might build on them for 3.12 and 3.13. If we'd done this as a separate project, it could have just got lost and died. And that's not to say that people shouldn't experiment or try out new things. I mean, there's Rust Python, which, you know, is an interesting experiment because probably not for performance, but because it's based on Rust, maybe it has interesting sort of uh, security approaches. There are all sorts of reasons to, to do new things. And I'm very glad that PyPy exists and continues to exist as a, a valuable research project. And there's interesting things that can be done with it. And also having multiple interpreters helps, multiple implementations helps us better define the language and see what's possible. Another thing is that specialization is key. We know this from research, but we do see that failing to apply it leads to worse performance. So I may have mentioned this before, but I think I want to reiterate that. And optimizations work well when combined with improvements in runtime. So I did mention hidden classes. Now hidden classes uh, complement specialization of attribute lookup very nicely. Uh, and by, by combining the two, we can get the overhead of attribute lookup down from the five to 10 memory reads not in required in the earlier versions of CPython down to just two. Now that's not quite as good as a single memory read required for C plus, in C++. But it's it's getting pretty good. And there's no silver bullet. There's no one sort of super optimization. Just adding a compiler isn't magically going to fix everything. The Python virtual machine has many parts. They interact in subtle ways. But this, uh, so just fixing one part or speeding one part up isn't necessarily going to help much. Um, and I think a lot of the VMs fail due to over optimization or not realizing this that you can't just add a compiler or fix this or do that and suddenly it will get faster. It is by implementing many small improvements that these large improvements are achieved. And that's not to say we can't speed up Python by a lot. We can, but it'll take many small improvements over many years of work. So let's peer into the future. Let's peer into the very near future starting next week. Python 3.11 is released in, I think, 10 days. So next week or so. So the fastest CPython project. Uh, we aim to make CPython many times faster, as did Unladen Swallow and S6. But we aim to do it over a number of releases uh, by speeding up Python by 40, 50% each release. And Python 3.11 is the first of those releases. And we plan to, like, I've gone through this history because I think it's valuable to study it because you can learn things from it. And we want to plan to you know, apply those lessons, um, both from the VMs I've described, but also from other VMs or other languages, academic research. Um, and we're willing to learn both from people's successes and their failures. So I'm going to score CPython 3.11 because we scored all the others. Uh, and it gets an eight. Now, this might not entirely surprise you that the project I'm leading, using the scoring system I've just invented, wins. It'd be a bit strange if it didn't. 
And if you think this is unfair, you're probably right. But I'm giving it a score of eight anyway, narrowly beating Pi Pi. Pi Pi is still faster in most benchmarks, but C Python 11, I think, has got more of a fundamental, a sound basis for getting further. We support the C API fully and almost by definition because it is C Python. Um, it has a faster baseline interpreter. And we have a, a roadmap to implement all of the uh, inter in all of the optimizations that PyPy does and and maybe some more. So can we take 311 to 11? Well, to get 11 points, we need to have four stars on performance, which means we need to make it super fast. Um, we have ways of doing this or ideas for doing this. Uh, there is new research on region selection suggests that neither the classic tracing nor method of time compiler um, region selection is the best. But the best way to do it is to compile or optimize very short linear traces of code and then compose them gradually into larger regions which better fit the nature of the program. And those might be something like methods, but maybe methods with bits missing or maybe a loop with a method in line to, into it. Or it, it depends on the program. And it, the point is it's, it, that adapts to the program. But secondly, and most probably most importantly, we just keep refining things. And these small improvements add up. Even if each improvement is only 1%, it takes 70 of those to double speed, double the speed, and 161% improvements to get five times the speed up. Now, 160 sounds like a lot of work. But over, you know, with a reasonable sized team over a, a number of years, it's not so much. And it's the sort of thing that we can do. And finally, we need a new AC API. Ironically, given how much I've been going on about how important it is to support the C API, the C API does hold back performance. So we don't want to support the C API in the long term, or we don't want to support the current C API. So we need a new C API that uh, extensions can move to, and then the virtual machines can move to. But this is a mold that's going to take many years, uh, possibly not even showing, and we might even be waiting to the 2030s before that happens. The HPI project is starting work on this, but it will be many years before this sees wide use. So how can you get a faster Python? Well, in the short term, you can try out one of the VMs I've talked about. I mean, try out PyPy. If you're running pure Python code, maybe sort of a web server or something like that, you can see big performance improvements. Uh, or you could just upgrade to 3.11. And not only do you get a, Python, a speed up, you'll also get the latest features and uh, a solid, as well as a solid boost in performance. If you PyPy doesn't work for you and uh, for for reasons, dependencies or whatever, you can't upgrade to 3.11 just yet, uh, try out the second p uh, Piston version two. If you're working, if you're using 3.8 and you can install the full version of Piston, uh, do that as you'll get the best performance. But if not, then you can just pip install Piston Lite on 3.8, 3.9, or 3.10 and get a, a useful performance boost. If you want Python to be faster in the longer term, then you can help out in a couple of ways. Well, we always need more benchmarks. So the more programs we have to benchmark on, the better feel we get for how Python is performing, how our work is going, what we need to improve. And you can submit PRs or put in uh, suggestions or requests at github.com slash python slash pi performance. And if you really want to help and you have lots of spare time um, and you don't end up, don't mind sort of getting uh, more involved than you might want to, then you can come and join the discussions at Faster C Python Ideas. So in conclusion, well, it's not just Python that, uh, that we need that we work on and we all have big projects and I don't want your projects to go to the way of many of these VMs. A lot of these VMs failed. They put in a lot of effort and they ended up in failure. So what lessons can we learn from the story? Well, I think one of the things is don't get caught up in superficial differences. Often these virtual machines would build themselves as different from previous failures in, in superficial and unimportant ways. So uh, for example, you know, specializing is before compiling is very important. Whether a compiler uses the RioJIT or ASMJIT backend probably doesn't really matter. 
And to thrive, a Python VM needs to support the C API. But again, whether it's a tracing or method time is uh, optimizer is much less important. So it's easy to get distracted by these superficial differences and miss deeper issues. I mean, it doesn't really matter whether your app uses Flask or Django if there's some fundamental flaw with it. And beware of cost that will sink your project. So lack of adoption due to perceived risk was probably the big blocker for almost everything because switching to a new VM is a risk. Are there bugs in it? It's always safer to go for CPython. So at least like the piston light and your approach of just being a pip installable sort of optimizer reduces risk and reduces the perceived risk and encourages people to use it. So I think that's a good idea. Uh, and the maintenance cost of keeping up with a moving target was a thing also I suspect sunk a lot of these problems, projects. But there's one important thing that I want to particularly emphasize, which is to take the time to understand your problem. It'll save you time in the long run. There's no point in spending years building something that will never work because there's a fundamental issue that you missed because you didn't do your research, uh, you didn't experiment enough. Anyway, so thank you. And I think we should have time for questions. はい、えー、貴重講演ありがとうございます。えっとこれからあの質疑応答に移りたいと思います。えっとスライドに上がっている質問をえっと読み上げてでそれでマークさんに聞いてみたいと思います。えー、質問です。Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the keynote.、Uh, we will now ask some questions from Slido.、Uh, we'll ask them both in Japanese and English.、Uh, so yeah,、uh, let's start with the first question. はい、質問です、えー。数々の高速化プロジェクト、えー、各個歴史をリサーチした上で、えー、ファスター C パイソンにつながるんですね。プロジェクト立ち上げ時にすでにリサーチ済みだったのでしょうか。あ、uh,、so the first question is、um, as you said in your keynote there's a lot of different projects that、um, uh, try to achieve a faster C Python and the question is、uh, if the research that you've done into all these projects Has been like if you finished all the research into it and then started this project, or if that's like an ongoing、uh, thing?、Uh, well, I mean, I did a lot of research obviously during my PhD, and that was many years ago. So this is always a, it's an ongoing thing. I mean, I obviously like to keep an eye on these sort of things. I mean, some of these come as a surprise as well. So a lot of these have been developed like.、Um, Just in private, and then they release the code pretty much when the project dies. So I have to sort of trawl through it and try and work out what happened. But yes, I do like to, to keep an eye on stuff and, it, you know, keep re and reach the research papers, academic research papers when possible as well. Thank you. ありがとうございます。えー、ではあの続きの質問を読み読み読まさせていただきます、えー。Python における過去の取り組み以外に、他の言語の高速化の取り組みに影響を受けることはありますか。まあ例えばえっ、ー、と Ruby や JavaScript など。Um, Python is not the only language that like tries to become faster.、Uh, so the question is if you've also looked into、uh, other languages and their efforts、uh, to make it faster. Like for example, Ruby or JavaScript or something like that. Well, I mean, JavaScript is the obvious one, and there was huge speed ups in JavaScript、uh, in the sort of there was a JavaScript performance wars, and this I think the the big takeaway there is that if you throw enough money at a problem, you'll see、so、you'll solve it.、Uh, I mean, there was huge investment from Apple, Google, Microsoft, and others、um, in speeding up their Browsers, and a sort of comparable level of investment in Python would produce huge speed ups.、Um, I mean, we can aim for those sort of speed ups, but、uh, yeah, it's an investment issue, which is why I want to wanted to emphasise that we I want people to push stuff into C Python that way because of if they're small projects or 
independent developers or volunteers, these little efforts then sort of accumulate and rather than be lost. Thank you. では続き読みます、えー、JavaScript は LL 言語でありながらネイティブに近い速度が出ます Python も長期的にはこのくらいの水準までのパフォーマンス改善を目指しているのでしょうか、uh, So as you just said like JavaScript is one of the languages that have gotten really really fast and get like close to native performances in some cases、uh, Is that something that you think is, should be or is the goal of CPython? Uh, I don't necessarily think there is a particular performance goal. I mean, we are taking a very pragmatic approach, which is what can we do to make Python faster right now with the, you know, the resources we have?、Um, and as we make it faster, then the techniques to make it faster still will obviously change. So I don't think we have a particular performance goal. Goal in mind. I mean, it all depends on you know, funding and who's available, and how many people we have to work on it.、Um, in terms of what we can do, yes, I think once the C API issue is solved, then there's no reason why we can't achieve performance very close to JavaScript. Yeah, thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Hi, <laughs> すみません Ariel, to all います Hi, let's see. に行きます、えっと、ファ,ファスター CPython に関わってみたいのですが CPython については現在全くの初心者の場合どのようなロードマップで学習すれば関わることができます,できますでしょうか So、uh, considering projects such as Faster CPython what would you recommend should somebody who is a complete beginner to CPython like what kind of things should they study or focus on so that they can contribute to such projects? Uh, it just rather depends on your skill set.、Um, I don't think necessarily being new to developing to a particular project is an issue. I mean, if you're new to C, that's going to be a challenge.、Uh, if you are a very experienced Python developer and know the semantics well, then maybe you can help out, even if your C isn't up to much. But、um, I mean, I would go and have a look at、uh, the ideas repo, which is.、Uh, On the, I think I put the link in the slides.、Um, and there are many, many issues there. And you might get a feel for the sort of ideas that people have, what we're playing with, what we're working on.、Um, you can look at the, the previous talk at、uh, Europython. And there's a few papers. Oh, actually, we've got some stuff up on our plans for 3.12. So I, I would start by just reading around and having a look at. What we're doing currently. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so,、uh, why do you think that it took such a long time or a long time until we started to kind of get serious about CPython's performance,、uh, like in CPython itself?、Uh, I think it's probably just a money issue. I think that. No one much cared about Python performance when everyone was,、uh, everyone was running Java. And then the browser wars happened, so everyone cared about JavaScript, and that's where all the investment went. And now everyone loves Python, so I guess that's the, the money follows, and、uh, people are investing in Python. I, I don't think it's anything deeper than that. Okay, thank you. And、uh, the next question is kind of、uh, related to the previous question, I guess. Uh, somebody asks, I am familiar with CPython, but don't know anything about JIT or compilation.、Uh, can they still contribute and help foster CPython? And in which areas?、Uh, yes, hopefully they can.、Um, so we don't have a compiler in、uh, CPython at the moment, and we don't expect to have one for at least a year,、uh, maybe two.、Um, And as I said, with specialization is the first thing. Now, we've, we've kind of done、uh, our first sort of step optimizer, which is the what's PEP659, which is the specializing adaptive interpreter. And that specializes each bytecode independently.、Um, our next step is to do some larger region optimizations. So, much like I was saying at the end of the talk, these short traces.、Um, 
I think there might be room there, but there's also specializations that still need to be done. But I, I would just recommend, yeah, have a look at the code. We have some interesting tools. Uh, there's a Python package called Specialist, and you can play around with that, and you can see how C Python 13, uh, 13, 311 is specializing the code, and that might be informative. You might learn from that. I mean, I would suggest just playing with stuff and learning things. And, and as you do so, you might find that something that you think should work and doesn't or some opportunity that you spot that we haven't. And that would be fantastic. OK. Uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for your keynote and also these uh, answers to the questions from our audience. And this uh, is all the time, unfortunately, we have for questions at this point. And so if there's any more questions, I think Mark is on the Slack as well. So you can maybe ask there or on Twitter or all the other places you may find him. And so Mark, uh, thank you very much uh, for your great keynote and for your time. And everybody, uh, let's give him a big round of applause again. ただいまよりお弁当の時間となりますお弁当ですが本日こちらホールの裏側の廊下にご用意してありますこちら、えっと、皆さんが一斉に取りに行ってし,してしまいますと大変混雑いたしますのでトラックごとこちらトラック1トラック2トラック3となってますがトラックごとの移動をお願いいたします OK、uh, from now on it's the lunch time but before everyone rushes out、um, so the lunch boxes are provided outside in the hallway But because if everybody rushes out right now,、uh, it will be very、uh, crowded. So we want to do it track by track by track,、uh, like one, two, three. So everybody else, please stay seated. はい、取りに行く際なんですが、一方通行でお願いをいたします。あちらのスタッフがいる扉、今手振っていただけると思うんですけど、あちらの扉から出ていただいて、ぐるっと回っていただいて、廊下からお弁当を取っていただき、一番近い扉からホールの中に戻っていただいて、ホールの中で食べるようにお願いいたします。Okay, and we will do this in an extremely orderly fashion, and that is that we will all leave the hall. Over there, where somebody's jumping around and、uh, waving their hands, and you turn right and grab your lunchbox and then follow the hallway and then come back in and eat it here. またお弁当ですが本日こちらに用意している2種類とハラル弁当の計3種類ご用意しております一番ホール入り口側に近い方が鶏マスタード焼き弁当真ん中に中華弁当肉団子酢豚弁当奥にハラル弁当の順番に並んでおります自分の食べたいお弁当を決めていただきそれを受け取っていただいてからホールの中に戻るようにお願いします And so we have three kinds of、uh, bento boxes today We have a chicken box,、uh, Chinese inspired、uh, box, and halal. And chicken is all the way over there,、uh, Chinese is in the middle, and halal is on the right、uh, from my point of view. <laughs> はい、それではご移動をお願いします。まずトラック1のお客様、向かって私から見て右側ですね。のお客様、こちら後ろを通って出ていただいて、お弁当を取りにいただくようにお願いいたします。OK、so let's get started. Everybody in track one, grab your bento box. Everybody over here, wait a little while. <laughs> ベジタリアンも奥にある。で、3つ並んでるので、あ今アナウンスしてるしてる。